We've all got a big decision to make about who leads the country for the next five years, about who has power and influence in Westminster. You get the opportunity to have your say in the election on July the 4th. During the campaign, we're talking to seven party leaders. Tonight, it's the turn of Nigel Farage, the leader of Reform UK. Nigel Farage, welcome. Thank you. I want you and all the leaders that I interview to have the chance to make your case about the issues that people are telling us are important to them. What you say is going to be broadcast in full, just to ask you to try and answer the questions. But to be clear, you don't know the questions before I put them to you. I want to begin, perhaps unusually, by saying congratulations, Nigel Farage. If the polls are to be believed, and they might not be, mm. you're going to play your part in wiping out the Tory ah. party, producing the greatest uh, Labour majority in history, a political mm. earthquake in Britain. Does that mm. give you pleasure? OK. That map was produced by Savanta Polling. OK. Their survey work, their field work, began on the 4th of June. Early. Very early. Before, their field work began before I declared I was in the race. Oh, so you could do better than that? Let me bring you up to date, fully up to date. OK, we, you know, we're, we're, we're filming this today. Last night at five o'clock, two separate companies came out with polls uh, and they're all playing catch up now. They all recognise something is happening out there. Yeah. On one poll last night, we were tied with the Conservatives on 19 percent. On a second poll that came out last night, we were leading the Conservatives 19 to 18. So that map suddenly looks very different. Well, it looks even... It's still even, whatever happens it's still, is a Tory wipeout. Now, of course, what I of really course. want our viewers to know is that is your objective. You are happy no, if no, the no, country no, 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 turns no. red and we get a huge Labour majority. What last night's polls show is we're going to win seats. A, a, a good number of seats, but it could become a very substantial number of seats. And very important that people recognise this. Even if I had not thrown myself into this campaign, the Conservatives were doomed anyway. A very large chunk of their 2019 vote feel literally betrayed by the party. And what I'm saying is this. Starmer's going to win, and we all know that now. It's just a matter of, you know, by what margin. Who is going to be the voice of opposition to a Labour government with a big majority? A split, divided Conservative party or me? And I'm saying it's going to be me. You know, you're saying more than that, aren't you? I was intrigued well, when your manifesto, you call it a contract, yeah. came out. There is Nigel Farage standing in front of 10 Downing Street. What you're saying to people is I'm no longer that chat show host. I'm no longer that guy mm. running for Parliament expects to lose again. I want to be your prime minister. Is your aim to do what your friend Donald Trump's done in the United States? There he is. To take over the right of British politics and then to take power. Well, there isn't a right of British politics. It's gone. It's disappeared. I mean, we've had 14 years of, of Conservative government. They may as well change their name to the SDP. It's been high tax, big state, more control of our lives, a damaging period for the five and a half million men and women running small businesses. They've not even been vaguely Conservative, low tax, free market. And on the big one, and the big one is immigration. You know, when you think that since the Conservatives came to power, our population has risen by six million. And you wonder why you can't get a GP appointment. You wonder why the roads are clogged. You I'm wonder gonna, why you can't get a house. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you about immigration and what you might do about it. But before mm. we take you through some of the issues for the future, yeah. just as I did with Mr Starmer, Sakir, just as I did with Mr Sunak, I want to talk about your record. Now, you've not been in office, so you don't have a record, but you do have a record of judgments, important judgments you've mm. made. Let's look at the man who you said was the statesman you most admire. No, I said... Vladimir I'm, Putin. Hold a second. I said I disliked him. But you said you a, admired him. I, I said I disliked him. But you admired him. As a person, but admired him as a political operator because he's, he's managed to take control of running Russia. Well, but the quote it, was right. The statesman yeah, you yeah, most you see, this is, And you did it after you see, this he is, seized Crimea. This is the, about the same time. Maybe before. No, no, before. Actually, actually before. This is the nonsense. You know, you can pick any figure, current or historical, and say, you know, did they have good aspects? And if you say, well, they, they were very talented in one area, uh, then suddenly you're the biggest supporter. Yeah, no, I, but you're right about that, Mr. Verrish, and yes, I'm not making yes. that point. Of course, we could take anything you say yes. out of context. I'm doing it for a different reason. You mm. want to be Prime Minister. Mm. That's what you want to be. Mm. And this 
is ah. Europe is at war. Now, when ah. the war happened, yep. the big war, yep. when Vladimir Putin sent his troops across the border in 22, you blamed the West, not him. You said, I'll right. just read it to you and then you can react, that on a tweet, it was a consequence of EU and NATO expansion. Is yes. that a judgment you stand by? Right. I'll tell you what, you don't know. I stood up in the European Parliament in 2014 and I said, and I quote, there will be a war in Ukraine. Why did I say that? It was obvious to me that the ever eastward expansion of NATO and the European Union was giving this man a reason to his Russian people to say they're coming for us again and to go to war. But you were echoing him. I was... Sorry. You were echoing him. That's what Putin no, says. No, 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 no. Sorry, I've been saying this actually, actually since the 1990s. Ever since, ever since yeah, well, the so fall of the wall. <laughs> but hang on a second. We've provoked this war. It's, uh, you know, of course it's his fault. He's used what but we've But we provoked the invasion of yes, Ukraine. Yes, and very interestingly, once again, 10 years ago when I predicted this, by the way, I'm the only person in British politics that predicted what would happen. And of course... Everyone said I was a pariah for daring to suggest it. George Robertson, former Labour cabinet minister, who went on to become the Secretary General of NATO, has in the last couple of weeks said the war is a direct result of okay. EU expansion. But I'm asking you, about, so, because so, it's your judgment, you want to be Prime Minister. Let well, me ask you about judgment, someone else. My, you... my, my judgment has yeah. been way ahead of everybody else's okay. in you understanding this. I want to ask you about another leader that you've said you've admired. Let's take a look at Liz Truss another leader that you say you've admired. Millions of people. Remember the mini-budget? You're laughing, but you said on the day of the mini-budget, Twitter's very helpful. Yeah. Today, you said, yeah. was the best Conservative budget since the 1980s. Yeah. Is that the judgment of someone who deserves to be Prime Minister? Well, she wanted to get rid of IR35 rules, which are damaging the self-employed. She wanted to change uh, corporation tax back to a more sensible level. There were a lot of things here that were pro-growth and pro-business. The one big mistake she made, she didn't have any cuts in spending. Mm. Interestingly, though... But she was on the right track, Liz Truss. What was interesting about that was the day before the budget, the Bank of England raised interest rates half a percent. So some of the thinking was right, the delivery was wrong, the timing was appalling. Yeah. Let's turn to the biggest judgment you've probably made in your career. You know, if you were... Knocked down by the number 10 bus. Which has happened before. On the way out of the BBC. No doubt your tombstone. It would say the man who brought us Brexit. Yeah. Wouldn't it? It's a failure, though. No, it's not a failure, but we failed to deliver. It can't be a failure. We've left the European Union. We're now self-governing. The question is then, what do you do with it? Mm. And What's your are... words? Brexit has failed, you said. No, well, that's half. Year. Again, it's half the sentence. Brexit has failed. Those who voted for it believing that immigration numbers would be reduced. No, Brexit has failed. You know. And you went on, on Newsnight yeah. last year, yeah. we haven't benefited from Brexit economically. Now, I promise you, we're going to come to immigration. Let's talk about the economy. It has failed, in your words, economically. Our overseas trade has changed, and it's quite good in many ways. Our overseas trade has changed in that we're now doing more business with the rest of the world than we've ever done before. And we've actually gone since the Brexit vote, from being the world's seventh biggest exporter to the world's fourth biggest exporter. Mm. That side of things is fine. Just pause Where? a second. It's interesting, that stat, because mm. you've used it a lot. Yeah. So I looked into it. Yeah. Or oh, is the trade in exports, sorry, is trade up or down in goods? No, it's services that we're booming in. Yeah, exactly. Which, which, so and, trade in goods, the yeah. things you told well, people in those well, left behind towns. Well, do you know why? That's down, not up, isn't well, it? Well, do you What's know what? up? Trade in gold? Yeah. yeah. Our net, and trade in financial services. Our net zero policies have de-industrialised Britain. And that's one of the reasons why we're not exporting goods, we're manufacturing less. And that's a separate debate, but something I feel very strongly yeah, about. Yeah, we'll come to that too. Where the economics has failed is, and I'm back to that five and a half million. You see, I'm old-fashioned. I believe that growth doesn't come from half a dozen big multinationals that virtually own our political parties in terms of their thinking. It comes from the actions, the simultaneous actions mm. of millions of people taking risk. But the only trade up, Mr Farage, is in helped. financial services, which yeah. is OK for the city boys like you. That's where you made well, your money. In. Well, financial services. The financial services. Financial but services. it's not so good for the people who wanted well, to leave exactly. the EU to be financial better services. off. They're not better off. Are financial they? services are in Bristol. They're in Cardiff, they're in Birmingham, they're in Manchester, insurance companies, etc. Financial services, the city is quite a small part of financial services in terms of jobs. 
My point is this. There were two realistic expectations from Brexit. One, we control our borders and reduce the numbers coming in. They've exploded. They've trebled to, to, to numbers you can't even believe. Mm. And secondly, and that's because of a Conservative government that didn't even try, because their big backers want cheap foreign labour. Stick with the economy for the moment. And, yeah, and secondly, it was a realistic expectation. Indeed, when Rishi Sunak was, became Prime Minister, he was going to scrap 4,000 EU laws. He then binned that policy. So we've not seen the simplification yeah. of regulation. Yeah, I hear you. It's but true. your words a year ago stand. You might blame someone else for it, but you were passionate for Brexit. You said yes. Brexit's failed. You said we haven't benefited from Brexit economically. The cab driver who brought me here said, you tell Nigel, <laughs> I voted leave and yeah. I regret it. Yeah. Because people like well, me that is, are I'm no afraid, better off. I'm afraid that is what the Conservatives have done with it. And that's why... It's always someone else's fault. If you put me in charge, it'd be very, very different. Okay, well, but of course, they didn't do that, did well, they? Let's, let's imagine and, you and, in charge. And the Conservative Party yep. never believed in Brexit. They never believed in it. They picked it up as a political opportunity and they failed to deliver. Deregulation and immigration were the gains that we could have had. We haven't had them because of the Conservative Party. Well, let's talk about immigration. And let's imagine you in charge. Here we are, we've got your contract here. Well, And this effectively says... No, one second, that contract says something different. That contract makes very, very clear, and I said this when I, when I promoted it, we are not going to be in government, uh, but... Now, hang on. You know, the Liberal Democrats... I'm trying to wriggle out of the, what's in here, are you? Certainly not. The Liberal Democrats last time round... Joe Swinson, vote for me, I'm going to become Prime Minister. It, it, it wasn't credible okay. in any way at all. Understood. What I'm arguing is these are the ideas, these are the policies, these are the debates yeah. that we'll fight and campaign on for the next five years. Sounds awfully like to me that you're trying to wriggle out some I'm of the detail. Really but let's, out, let's do the really detail. Of anything. No, no, let's do the detail because no, it'd be not. clearer. To immigration. Yeah. Now, you made a really big claim on immigration. We've got the critique, so let's not go backwards again. Mm. Let's talk about what you could do yeah. going forwards. You've said that you want to have no net migration, and you said you could do it on day one, mm. if you're in power, not gradually, mm. on day one. Mm. Now, let's be clear what no net migration mm. really means. Yes. It means that people only move here if other people have moved out, have left the country. Effectively, one in, one out, if you're going to have no net yeah. zero. Is that right? Uh, yes, I mean it's not as simplistic as that, but but yes, I mean all the time people are people are leaving all the time, people are coming all the time. Uh, what we do know, what we do know, is that there's an argument that says we need more and more immigration because there are labour shortages. All right, that's that's one argument that gets put. I've got cases now of, of nurses who've been through university who've been denied jobs in British hospitals because because the NHS with government support have been employing foreign nurses and British ones qualified with big debt aren't being employed. Well, that brings That's us to the detail, example. doesn't it? Which is, you say one but, in, one out. The, Let me just answer the question. Here's the biggest detail. Let here's me answer the, the question, detail. right? Yeah, because you'll have a chance. Yeah. In this contract, it says that you'll make exceptions. You'll make exceptions for essential skills, mm -hmm. particularly around healthcare. So, does that mean, just quickly, yeah. as time is short, Nurses, they can come into the country. Well, not until we employ the British ones. And for the British government to have been paying a thousand pounds per nurse for health trusts mm. to employ foreign nurses. I mean, can you believe? Yeah. Can you believe the scandal of what's been going on here? But let's go through paramedics, midwives, pharmacists, carers for the elderly. They can all come in. We should. Of course, they can come in. But here's the point. That gets you to three hundred twenty-eight thousand last year. No, no, no. In terms no. of health visas. And here's the point. Of all the work visas we've given out in the last two years, the record two years, 50% of the total numbers have been dependents. Okay? So, yes, people come to work, but they're bringing dependents with them. And here is the big pitch of why this should be the immigration election. A 10 million increase in our population since Mr Blair came to power. A 6 million increase since the Tories came to power. 85% of that directly down to government policy on legal, not illegal, but legal Why migration. Why I'm trying to find out what you so, do, so, so, rather so there, than so what you'd a, say. There is a population crisis. Yeah. What Boris Johnson and the Tories did, yeah. they lowered the levels, That's they lowered then. the skill what levels. What are you going to do? What I was asking yeah. you is how your system works. One in, one out is the effective thing. Yeah. People can only come if other people have already gone. Mm. So does that mean that if a company wants to employ computer programmers, we don't have enough of them, 
If they want a software developer, we don't have enough of those. What about an architect? What about those carers? Mm. Does some new body uh, working for Nigel Farage say, look, sorry, mate, no visa for you until Bob gets his dream home in Spain? If you get a job with CNN... What's the answer? Right, hang on. If you get a job with CNN, you will get a one or two year work permit. You'll go to New York. You'll work for CNN. If you overstay your work permit by one day, they will smash your door down, put you in handcuffs and deport you from the country. All right. We have been completely confusing work visas with permanent right to stay so that, and with bringing is that your own what should family. Happen here? Do you know something? A work permit should be a work permit, should be a work but permit. Door should be smashed down. People should be arrested and deported. You raised I'm it. I'm talking figuratively. In America, they would do that. <laughs> okay. We right. wouldn't quite do that here. Just not sure I know I, how I mean, this system I mean, works. I mean, can you believe? I know what you're cross about, but I don't know how can your system you works. Well, I'll give you an example. Students, overseas students, have brought with them 125,000 dependents. Not their mums. You, you said on the television yeah, the other bring, day, their mums. Yeah, bring your mum. No, no. It's yes, not true, Mr Farrell. It is true. You cannot bring your mother. You've never you, been able to bring you your bring mother. Who you like and the rules have just been changed so you can't yeah, bring your dependent. We are so this is lax. simply not true. We are so lax in this country. You can do what you like. Nigel Farage, it's not true what you're well, saying. Well, it is. But anyway. You can bring your mum. You're saying it's true? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's turn to the NHS because you've been clear that you want if, nurses. You say, I need care, etc. Okay. Yeah. You want to turn to the NHS because you've raised the issue yeah. about the NHS. Let's talk about that. Yeah. And you've been quite brave on that. Mm. You've made the point, and you've done it in interviews with me over mm. many years, that you have said, look, the NHS doesn't work as it is now. Mm. We need to be brave enough, you say, to consider a completely new system. Would you be honest enough to admit what that might mean? In France, and you've often mm. praised the French yeah. health system, you effectively have to take your wallet to go and see the doctor. There's a charge of €25 Euros to no, go and no, see no, a family no, doctor. No, 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 no. If you turn up, you don't pay that charge. If you don't turn up, you forfeit it. That's how the French do it. It's a twenty-five and, euro and, charge and, and, and to see a family doctor. Well, no, because you get it back. It's yeah. refunded. Okay, in it's Ireland, a, no, there's a fifty. In Ireland, there's a fifty euro but, but charge. Ireland doesn't have to see the Ireland GP. Ireland doesn't have. Ireland does not have a health service anything like us. You've got to ask yourself a question: What is the NHS for, right? And the original concept, and the one we should defend totally now, is that it's free at the point of delivery. The argument that I'm making, and by the way, very interesting, Professor Carol Sikora, global cancer yeah, expert, with you. has said, yeah. look, you know, Nigel's thinking is right. Mm. The question is, how do we get there? Mm. And everybody would say to you, that the French have a mutual system where if you, out of, yeah. out of your income, some of your money goes towards an insurance policy, yeah. effectively. And if you haven't got the money, you don't pay. And those be firms, clear with viewers and who those don't firms, know, those firms, you pay the doctor and then you claim the money back. Well, well, so you do take your wallet to the doctors because you pay and then your insurance you, gives you back. It's a big change. Unless, I'm just asking you whether unless, you want to do yeah, it. Well, it costs you nothing to go to the doctor, right? Because you get it back. And the reason they do that, and by the way, British GPs have this problem, is people book appointments and don't turn up. Okay. All right? So may actually, think about it, it makes sense. Okay, understood. It's quite a big change and you want to make it. Now, in this manifesto, and this is why I suggest you, contract, you might be... Contract. Well, you can call it a contract. I'll call it a manifesto. No, it's a horrible word. In this document, yeah. I mean, there are promises to spend more on health and more police and more soldiers and tax cuts for this group, tax cuts for that group, tax cuts for the rich, tax cuts for the poor. Everybody gets everything they want. It's like Christmas well, when you open this. Well, well the big You one. told me the country was skint. Yeah, it is skint. That's what you said. So yeah. how come you can afford okay. spending of £140 billion a yeah. year which is 50% more than Jeremy Corbyn. Well, first point is the biggest pledge in there, apart from the freeze on immigration, apart from leaving the ECHR so we can genuinely deport people who come it's by the boat. to do with money. The biggest domestic policy in there is raising the level at which people start paying tax to £20,000 a year. Why? What, it all pays for itself? Why, hang on a second. Why? Because there are a lot of people in this country living on benefits, who don't want to be on benefits. I'm asking you where you get £140 I'm just about, about to explain to you. That is massive. Well, let me explain. The, party. the biggest expenditure is raising the threshold to 20000 That means if you're on benefits now and you go to work and work more than 16 hours a week, you're worse off. I still don't know where the money's coming from. Well, number one, 
we will get people off the unemployment register. Yeah. Into it's not going to raise you 140 billion pounds a year. So I can tell you, you, you know on I'm a celebrity. Zero. You should have been on Fantasy Island. I get out of These it. These figures are nonsense, I and you, you know they're nonsense. I'll tell you what is nonsense, real nonsense. The Labour and Conservative net zero policies. And why are we not debating it? Well, we are. Because no, 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 no. You won't debate it with them. They won't debate it with you. And this is the remarkable thing yeah. about this election, is how few differences there are between Labour and Conservative. They are both committed to decarbonising the grid. The estimated cost, listen to this, the estimated cost is between two and three trillion. It's a ridiculous number. Hmm. We're quite confident, quite confident, we can save over 30 billion a year just by getting rid of this ludicrous commitment and going for a longer term plan of nuclear energy, which is carbon free. That's There's why I want one. to ask you what underlies this, if I may, on climate change. Yeah. Because you're making a big promise. You're saying yeah. we're going to scrap the net zero programme. It's mad. Is your message to people watching this now, many of whom are very worried about climate change, mm -hmm. hugely worried about it, is your essential message crisis What's crisis? No, I mean, I do think ever since the late 1980s that perhaps there's been a bit of hype around this. And I think, you know, that, 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 that perhaps is wrong. Now, what have we got people, you know, spraying Stonehenge with orange powder? Because all we ever talk about is fear rather than solutions. So is David Attenborough wrong and Nigel Farage is right? No, 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 no. I'm not arguing the science. I'm arguing... Well, what you we... are. I am not arguing the science. Well, if you say it's not really a crisis, we don't really need to I do anything I about it. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. I said we spend too much time hyperventilating about the problem rather than thinking practically and logically what we can do. You said climate change was a hype, so, Mr Farage. I heard you say, do you still think what you used no, no, to think no, no, of the no, king? No, no, you no, said no, the no, king no, 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 was an eco-loony. No, 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 no. Do you still uh, think the king's an well, eco-loony? Well, the king, the king, I mean, he wasn't the king then. I, I can't speak ill of the monarch, obviously. Um, but he did used to say... You said he was stupid. He did used to say that carbon dioxide was a pollutant, which I thought was a very stupid comment. Here's the point. If it's going to Here lead the, the planet to no, no, burn, no, 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 it's no, no, not no. a bad word, is it? Right. Listen. We've deindustrialized. Our steel works close. Where do they go? India. The same steel gets produced in India under lower environmental standards and then shipped back to us. Globally, by closing those steel plants, the amount of CO2 put into the air has gone up. All we've done is to export the emissions. Mm. Similarly, with coal. There's an anthracite mine, you know, up in Cumbria that could be open. We're not going to open it. We are overtaxing the North Sea. The Tories have done this, not Labour. Mm. Chevron, after 60 okay. years, have left. So we so, will be using, even those who are more are most worried about this, will tell you, we'll be using oil and gas in 2050. Mm. But My argument is you, you, that we should... Your argument is the, David Apple is wrong and the King no, is wrong. No, We're no, clear no, about that. Not, no, no, the King yeah. is wrong to say CO2 is a pollutant. Okay. That is wrong, okay. clearly. We have to move on, Mr Farish. if we go for nuclear energy, and you know, you and I both know, Rolls-Royce are making amazing strides yep. with small modular reactors, we will then have electricity production that produces Understood. zero, zero carbon. Understood. We have to move on. Time is short. Now, you... What a, what a pity. You have had one or two problems with candidates. Sure. And what you say when you've had them is you had problems with your vetting system. We understand. We don't need to repeat that. And you say other parties have had them as well. Well, well the others have got betting scandals. Yes, uh, the sure. Other, the others in the last okay. parliament were exposed as perverts, weirdos. Yeah. I mean, goodness okay. me. Let's talk about your candidates, though, because you're in the room and they're not. You've had candidates calling immigrants a plague. You've had candidates who say Muslims should be removed from the UK. Really? You've had a candidate that claims that Africans have a low IQ. Why do you think that people with really extreme and unpleasant views rally to your cause? We've also had an awful lot of candidates being stitched up in the most extraordinary way with, co with quotes taken out of context. Look, let's why, be honest. Why, why do they rally to your cause? Because I think the truth of it is, before I got involved, you know, reform was virtual in the sense that it had no party, there's no national party I'm structure. I'm asking you a slightly different question. I'm asking about yeah. you. No, they no, 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 think, no, 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 don't no, no. they, that they're you not, agree with no, them? They're not there because of me. I they, wasn't. They no, think you... No, no, no. You when, founded the party, when, you're the no, president no, 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 no. of the party, I you're the been, owner of the party. I have, I have had no involvement with the day-to-day -day running of the party okay. for over three years. Yeah. These candidates were recruited before I said I was going to play an active role in the party. Mm. And frankly, 
They were so desperate for people to stand that people stood and then we employed a big vetting company who didn't do the job. Yes, you can't run and, vetting, and I, but you could I, find £150 I, billion pounds and, and in and public spending you, savings. When the Labour Party go through those that apply, when the Conservative Party goes sure. with those that apply, they have to reject many. Let on, me put to you route. what I think many people think. They think that the reason with these deeply... These people are deeply unpleasant and extreme views rally to your cause, yours particularly. No, no, they think it's because those people believe that that's what you really think. Well, and they listen to some of the divisive and provocative things you've said over the years and say, Nigel's our guy. Cobblers. Absolute cobblers. You know, I talk about things that are worthy of debate. I often get shouted down and abused by the political class or media class. And then you know what happens, Nick? Two or three years later, the things that I've said become mainstream debate. And I've always been absolutely clear about this. Uh, and you look at, you know, take the Brexit party, for example, that won the European elections back in 19. We were, not with any positive discrimination, the most diverse group in that European mm. parliament. This is what I believe. I believe regardless of race or religion or sexual preference, that everybody should be treated equally. I don't believe in group rights. I don't believe in dividing us up. And, and, and I think, you know, Martin Luther King said in that famous speech, I want my kids to be judged not by the colour of their skin. Sure. I believe in meritocracy. Yeah, you said you admired Enoch Powell and you criticised the first non-white British Prime Minister for not understanding our culture. That's why people think... Well, he doesn't, he doesn't but, understand well, our culture. Yeah. But you, Otherwise, you it... he would have stayed at D-Day to honour the remaining remnants yeah. of that generation. You said it about a non-white politician. Let no, no, me no, just no, 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 finish no, no. this interview by He's asking. too upper class. We've he's too detached. Sure. He couldn't go down the pub no and meet ordinary people. You know that, he's not I white. know that. Let's finish by asking you a question for you to address the audience. You say, in a way, that you want to restore trust in British politics. And what we've done over the last half hour or so is say, well, well he's a Putin admirer, he's a Trump backer, he's no, Liz no, Trump no, 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 applauding, no. he's divisive. Are you really the man to restore trust in British politics? That's really? A, that's a very metropolitan way of putting things. Do you know what I am? I'm a fighter, I'm a warrior, I'm a campaigner. I stand up against big institutions when they behave badly, whether they're banks or out-of-touch bureaucracies based in Brussels. And very often, I win. Nigel Farage, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Next up in our leader interviews, the co-leader of the Greens, Adrian Ramsey.